Here is a work in progress, and you could see this one just has regular acrylic yarn that was loaded into this one, and the braid actually comes down through the center of the circle that we created in the disc. And this is what this one looks like so far. You can see the beautiful colors braided tightly into the kumihimo cord. This is one of the cords that I created using the kumihimo method. And this is just with regular 100% cotton yarn. I used red, white, and blue. You can see how beautiful it turned out. This is the first kumihimo braid that I made and I attached this little locket to it. I just took some excess cord and tied the little locket to the braided kumihimo yarn cord and then I attached the magnetic latch and you can see how strong it is. I made this one for my crochet dragon. Here's the crochet dragon and I have a separate video tutorial for the crochet dragon. But this fits right around the dragon's neck. The locket is by Fairy Tale Bead Treasures. Here's a close-up of the dragon with the necklace on. The glue that I used is crazy glue. Some of the glue, I didn't like a lot of the warnings that they had on, on them, so this one says it has a skin guard. Of course, the adult will want to use this type of glue when the project is done to help put the backing or the clips onto the jewelry. But this crazy glue worked well for me. I found a really good deal on this super glue, so I'm going to just use this super glue. So on some of the projects I used um, this super glue instead. I used saran wrap. Just a little bit of saran wrap so that I can squeeze the ends together if the yarn frays. There are different clasps that you can use on the ends of your finished kumihimo braid. I'm going to try these different ones. This is a thick and multi-cord. And then this one is a different hook-like end. So far I like the magnetic one that I found at Michael's craft store. But I'm going to try these. This is what the two ends look like. Here's the size where you're going to put the yarn ends into. You can attach beautiful designs that you um, for your braided cord. I like these stones. So the one that I'm making on video, I'm going to attach this one to the braided finished braided cord. And it's going to be a collar for my crochet pillow hound dog, which I'm going to show at the end of this video tutorial. For this project, I used this foam board, ready board, that I found at the Dollar Tree store. But the actual disc that someone else had made had a nice smooth foam board that they used. This one has like a 
paper type surface. It'll work, but if you can find the foam board that's smooth, I really like the feel of that foam board. But I'm going to show you how to make this disc with In one the of the corners board. of your board, you're going to want to take your pencil and just draw each side is 19 millimeters and you're going to draw an octagon with each side 19 millimeters and an octagon has eight sides. The length and height, the width and height are three inches so both three inches just draw that out and then we're going to cut it out. You're also going to want to draw a rectangle and you're going to need, need six of these. One side is two and a half inches and then the other side is one and a half inches. And again, you're going to need six of these. Then you can take your heavy duty scissors and you're just going to cut out the octagon. First you can just make a square, cut out a square and then you can cut the sides after you've cut out the square. Then you're going to want to circle about a half centimeter in diameter, a half centimeter. Then go ahead and cut the sides. Use a knife or if you're a child of course your parents would have to cut out the center and I used a knife to cut out the center. Once you have your Kumihimo disc cut out then you're going to want to make these little centimeter sized cuts along each side that you have on your disc. So just take your disc and right in the center of one of the sides, you're just going to cut about a centimeter. And you're going to do that on each side. And then come back. Now you have your Kumihimo disc all ready to put the If you enjoy on. Kumihimo, you can get a lot more complicated with the designs. I'm just going to show you the basic beginner design. But I found this little kit at Joanne Craft Store. So some of the craft stores may have this available if you don't want to make your own. I used a knotting cord from Createology. I found this on clearance so I thought it would be a neat type of yarn to use for this Kumihimo project. This is the size, 27.3 yards, 25 meters. What's neat about this yarn also is it shows you how to do some hand braids too. How to braid by hand if you want to try that The first that thing you're well. going to do is take your yarn that you're using and you're going to cut the length that you want to have for whatever you're making. You don't want to make it too short so it's better to make it longer if you think that you're going to need a longer and then you can cut it shorter if you need to. But for this project you're going to cut six and a half feet for the length of seven strands of yarn. So six and a half feet and seven strands of yarn. Now you're going to take your rectangle that you cut and you just want to cut about a centimeter slit in one of the sides of the rectangle. Then you're going to take one of the strands that you cut, one of the strands of yarn, and you're just going to wrap it around the cardboard. Just wrap it all the way around. And just leave a little bit of length for attaching to the disc. You're going to need seven of them. And then any excess yarn that you have, I just placed all of my excess yarn onto another disc just for easy use. You can see how much I have left over.
Now for the next step, you're going to take each of the yarn strands and put them right through the center. You're going to leave the top with no yarn in it. Leave enough on the bottom of the disc for tying a knot and then just take and put each yarn strand into each of the spaces. So I'm just do, going to do a couple of them with you. You can use your tapestry needle too to help you if you need to get the yarn strands. So you would just take a tapestry needle and that will help you get the yarn strands through the center of the hole if you need to. And then you just leave the same length on the bottom for tying a knot and do that with each slot and then come back. Now you can see how I have all the strands in each of the slots except for the one on the top. Then you're just going to take and turn over your work and you're going to want to tie a knot. So I just took and split the yarn strands and then you can just take and tie a knot. And now you're ready. That's all there's to it. If you have short strands of yarn, you don't need these. I, the reason I have these is because I want to make this a longer cord, and this helps from the yarn ends getting tangled as you're working your Kumihimo project. Here is another example showing the different colored yarn strands. And this one you can see the yarn ends are just left loose because it's going to be a short cord. So you just have to keep moving the yarn strands out of the way. But since they're short, you don't need the little rectangle card pieces that help keep the longer ends controlled. Now you are ready to begin your Kumihimo cord. The first thing you're going to do is take that empty side where there's no yarn and move it counterclockwise. And then you're going to count one, two, three. You're going to take that cord, you're going to bring it out, and you're going to bring it down into that space. Then you're going to turn the cord again. You're going to count one, two, three. You take that yarn and move it to the other side. And that's as simple as it is. You just take and move. And of course you keep your yarn from getting tangled. But all you do is take and count from the empty side. One, two, three. Take that yarn and move it down. Turn your work, take that cord, and move it down. And it's as simple as that. You just keep turning, take that third, and move it down. And as you work, you're creating the center braid that will move down. So keep working, and when you come back, I'll show you what my cord looks like as I work. The other helpful hint that I have for you, you can see how I'm starting to create my beautiful little Kumihimo braid cord is coming out of the center. Don't let your yarn rectangles be too long because it, they will get tangled up easier. If you keep them fairly short like mine, then it's easier as you work. So you can just take and move 
without it getting as tangled as you create your braided cord down the center. You can see that as you work, you have this beautiful cord that's starting to come out of the bottom. And all you're doing is just going around and counting up one, two, three, and folding over into the empty space. And it creates this beautiful cord. Then, if you start getting really close, you can just release a little bit. Make sure you don't get it too long because then it'll start getting tangled. So just release a little bit. And then continue working. What I do is as I'm working, I'll gently pull on the cord to help it come down as I'm making the braid. And you can see how it's creating this beautiful braided cord right down the center on the other side. And all you're doing is just turning one, two, three. And it creates a beautiful braided cord. This is how mine looks so far and I've reached the size that I want so I'm going to go ahead and remove and cut each of my yarn pieces off And now I have my braided cord ready to put whatever latch that you want to put on it. I'm going to place this latch on it. It comes in a set of three. Then I just took my scissors and cut the ends. Be careful with the super glue so you don't get it on your fingers. And then just take and put a little bit onto the ends of the yarn. And then you can use the plastic wrap to squeeze the ends together. Then just put a little bit of glue into the cap. You only need a little bit. And you're going to stick the yarn inside of the cap. Here you can see how I have the yarn inside of the cap. This type of yarn is a little bit harder to keep inside than the acrylic yarn, but it's still, you might want to leave it on a paper towel while it hardens in place. Once I got it in there, I just held it in place for a minute to allow the glue to settle in there. With this super glue, it came out a little bit fast and I got a little bit on my hand, but I used a little bit of acetone uh, nail polish remover and that was able to get some of it off. But just be real careful with your super glue, of course, not to get on yourself, but if you do, that's what worked with me to get it off. So here is the finished clasp on the ends. Here you can see that the super glue really held it well. What's nice about this clasp is you can size it. So if you need to make it a little bit larger, you have extra loops or chains that you can attach it. Here is the cord that I have finished and I'm just going to show you how I'm putting the clasp on this cord. But I just take, this is the knotted end that was on the inside of the disc and got longer and longer. And then these are, on the other side, these were the excess this yarn ends that I had that didn't use. 
So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the ends. I want the full length of this cord, but if you wanted yours shorter, you don't want it quite this long, you can cut it to the length that you want and you can make one side a bracelet and then another side something else. So you won't waste any of the ends, but I'm going to use the full length of this cord. So I'm going to take and cut each end. So here's the one end. I'm going to take and just cut with my scissors and I'm going to do the same thing for the other end. Now my both my ends are ready to put the clasps on. So one clasp, one piece goes on one side and the other goes on the other side. For mine, I had to take and cut the end so that I had a little bit of a triangle shape to it. Then I took the glue and I used my crazy glue and just put it right onto the end. Then I took the side, one of the snaps, and put it right onto the end. Make sure you get all of the yarn strands in there. I put a little bit of glue inside of the snap as well. Then you can take a paper towel and just wipe off any this excess. This is what the one side looks like when I was done gluing that in to it. And then I'm going to take the other side and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to trim the end so that I have a triangle shape to the yarn. Then I'm going to take and put a little bit of glue on the inside. And then also put glue onto the end. After I have the glue on both sides, then I'm just going to take and put the clasp on. Sometimes you'll have to just form you can use plastic to squeeze the ends together. So I'm just going to take some saran wrap and just squeeze the end narrow. And then just make sure I have all the yarn strands into the center. Then you just let it dry in place. Now with my other clasp, you can see how this crazy glue worked really well for keeping the yarn. This is the acrylic yarn or 100% cotton yarn and it stayed nicely, the strength of it. And the clasps connect. Oops. 
there. And it's very strong. This is how the charms look on the necklace. This special necklace is going to go on to the Crochet Hound Dog. I also have a special name tag. Her name is Blossom. And on the back, I belong to Allie. It can slip right onto the book ring along with the other pendants that I have. Oops. It fits right around the neck of the Crochet Hound Dog and it can be taken off if you want to wear it as a necklace or just leave it on the hound dog. Now I'm just going to show you a close-up of the hound dog and everything that she has inside of her. This is her eye. These are her eyes and her nose and her mouth. This is a bow that can come off. It has a breadth that fits right through the crochet stitches. But if, you want, if the child wants to wear it, you can take it off. Here's the beautiful flower with a cupcake button right in the center. And right behind the flower is a pen. There's a little case right behind the flower where there's a pen. Here on the back of the dog is a very soft crocheted top. She has a skirt on crochet skirt which has a separate video tutorial and the hound dog too has a separate video tutorial and what's nice about this hound dog is that she actually opens up so there's a place inside where you can put different items I'm going to show you what I put in there and then also there's a hidden under this soft crocheted fabric there's a hidden place where you can hide All right, a diary. So here. I have the diary. Oh, it is caught on the key. So it actually has a lock and a key on the diary. These items I got from the dollar store. I kept them in their package. Items, toys. Here's a magic towel. This is a little case, butterfly case. Some jumbo playing cards, frozen playing cards. Dory color and sticker activities, fun on the go. Gel pens. Most of these items I got from the Dollar Tree. Here is a little coloring magic painter. little scrubbing bath time fish, bath puppet. Inside are some bubbles for blowing bubbles and of course the purple. Some silly putty. And that's it. And all of that fit right into the container which I show how to make this in the crochet hound dog tutorial. With this one I made a slightly larger compartment for the inside but I show you another method that I used as well. And that's it as far as the crochet hound dog.